Hey, what's going on guys? So it's time for another anime figure haul and I have four pre-owned figures that I got mainly off of my figure collection at some pretty reasonable prices. So pretty excited to share with you these figures. A couple of them are actually gonna be what I would consider grail figures. And then other two are just figures that I just really wanted to pick up. But I would say that these figures have a theme going on with them and this is completely unplanned and that these figures are a little bit more on the degen side of the anime figure world. So I have a couple of figures here that have the ability to be cast off. I'm not gonna show any of the cast off parts in this video guys, not for you two, but I do have a couple of figures with those options. And then I have another couple of figures that are just kind of scandalous as to what they're wearing. So super excited, so let's go ahead and jump into it. But before checking out these expensive pieces of plastic, let me tell you about our sponsor today, Tokyo Tree and Sakurako. Sakurako is a monthly authentic Japanese subscription box that supports local Japanese snack makers. Each box comes with 20 traditional authentic artisan Japanese snacks, including Japanese teas and a special Japanese household item. Every month's box has a theme and for January 2024, it is New Year's in Hiroshima where Sakurako embarks on a special journey to Hiroshima. Sakurako has partnered with the Hiroshima government to bring you guys a unique box of delicacies and cultural treasures within this snack box. Delight in a curated selection of Hiroshima's finest treats like the lemon mochi, the banana bomb kuhin, New Year's senbai, and the amakuji candy, all which pair perfectly with their fragrant matcha azuki tea. Every month's box also comes with a household item, and for this month, you'll receive a furushiki, which is a traditional Japanese wrapping cloth with a rich history that dates back centuries. Mm, everything is absolutely delicious in this box. I think I tried a little bit of everything, but some of my favorite items are definitely going to be the lemon mochi. I'm just a huge fan of mochi. The consistency is really good with this one. It has a very light lemon flavor, not too overpowering. Same thing with the banana bomb kuhan. It's a very natural banana flavor and not artificial at all. It's really, really good. And then of course, my taiyaki, I already ate one. I'm working on my second one right here, but it has a nice red bean paste filling, which is my favorite filling for taiyaki. And then another one that I wasn't like familiar with is going to be what they call the Subu, Tsusubu Arari. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that right, but it's kind of like a rice cracker, but it has like two different flavors. One is a shrimp flavor, and then one is a seaweed flavor, but ugh, it is so damn good. I need to find where I can get some of these from. And the Azuki tea, which is crafted by boiling roasted Azuki beans to perfection, is absolutely delicious. Each Sakurako box will include a booklet describing each of the snacks, including their allergen information, and there's also a ton of information about Japanese culture within. Tokyo Tree is a monthly pop Japanese snack subscription box where you will get up to 20 exclusive, limited edition, and seasonal flavored Japanese snacks that are only available in Japan for a limited time. Whereas Sakurako focuses mainly on traditional flavors, Tokyo Tree's specialty is the latest and coolest snacks in Japan. In each box, you'll score a Japanese drink, limited edition Kit Kat party pack, and cool and crazy full-size popular Japanese chips, candy, and more with seasonal flavors. Just like Soccer Co., these have a monthly theme, and for the month of January 2024, the theme is New Year Snacking Party. This box is filled with snacks inspired by Japanese Oshigatsu or New Year's Holiday, such as the Lucky Red and White Kit Kat, the Agamochi or Deep Fried Mochi Snacks, and a pack of soba noodles and many, many more. I mean, just look at this thing, guys. This thing is absolutely loaded with snacks. It would take me forever to get through all these snacks. So I'm gonna go ahead and start right now and give you guys my thoughts on a few of them. The Kit Kats were tasty. A white chocolate and milk chocolate combo, can't go wrong with that. But my favorite items in this this box were the taiyaki, which had the texture of an ice cream cone and a thick chocolate filling. It was almost like eating room temperature chocolate ice cream cone. Next is in the Goya donut, which was probably the best thing I had to eat all day. The donut is like a fluffy pancake and it has oh a hint God, of maple so flavor to it. And the red bean filling inside was smooth and the perfect sweetness. They do have savory snacks as well, including the seaweed salt potato sticks. They're shoestring potato chips with seaweed on them, so pretty simple but very tasty. And to wash it all down, there's a CC lemon, which is a carbonated sweet lemony drink. It was so good, I just wish I had a bigger can. And just like Soccer Code, Tokyo Tree Boxes will include a booklet, which is what I've been reading from, which will describe each of the snacks, including their allergen information, and of course, will have a wealth of information about Japanese culture. So what are you waiting for? Both of these boxes are excellent and has something for everyone. Click that link in the description and use code WILL for $5 off your first box. 
Thanks to Sakura Co. and Tokyo Treat for sponsoring this video. So starting with our first figure and probably our most wholesome figure for this entire video, it's going to be Rius Grimry from High School DxD. This is the one seven scale by Kadikawa. This is what they call her pure white bikini version, which is essentially a bikini wedding dress. Now, when this figure first went up for pre-order, I was super excited. I love Rius but my excitement quickly died down when I saw the price and it was going for about 30,000 yen on Amiyami. And at the time of when this actually went up for pre-order, I would say the yen was definitely a little bit more expensive. So that was probably around 220, $230, somewhere in between there, I think. And then when you take into account the shipping costs, you're looking at at least 260, $270 to get it here to the US. And that was definitely above what I wanted to pay for really just about any you know, one seven scale anime figure, no matter how much I love me some Rhea. So super sad at that time, but I was able to get this off of my figure collection for $185 ship. Now, without even thinking about the price anymore and just looking at the figure, I think she looks absolutely terrific. I love the concept with it. We've definitely seen anime figures where they turned wedding dresses into bikinis, but I'm not sure if we've ever seen like a wedding kimono turn into bikini, or at least I haven't seen it, but it looks really cool. And I was actually kind of interested in learning more about bridal kimono. So I looked it up online and this is called, or at least what it's supposed to be, is called a Shiru Muku Kimono. Hopefully I'm pronouncing that correctly. But yeah, just really do love the design. I definitely like the bottom part here, this kind of translucent aspect of her dress. It looks really good now that I have it in person. Now with the figure, you do have some changeable parts. So with her arms, you can actually remove these arms that have the sashes and replace them with arms that just have some long white gloves that go up to her elbow. Those look pretty good and they do expose kind of her body a little bit more and that's something that you wanted to go with. And you do also have a traditional kimono hood, which I did look that up. This is called called a wataboshi. So you can kind of pluck this little hair out of her head and just kind of throw that you know, hood on top of her if you wanted to go even more traditional with that route. Personally, I kind of prefer this look the most with the sashes and without the hood because I really do like the character design aspect of having that hair kind of sticking out of her head. Now my favorite aspect of this figure is definitely gonna be the pose, but more importantly, it's gonna be the facial expression that really, really sells it. I mean, with that facial expression, it's just a very endearing look that she's giving to you know whoever she's looking at. I'm assuming it's going to be the person she's about to marry, but her reaching out you know, to grab his hand and that look, it's just really, really well done. Now one bad thing about this pose is definitely gonna be that it does require this little support rod here. Without it, she is fairly wobbly on the base so definitely need to have that if you want to keep her secure for you know long term so a little unfortunate but i don't really think it's in a way too much in my opinion so i can kind of look past that. Now, when it comes to a high school DXC figure, you cannot mess up when it comes to the body sculpt. And Katakawa did a pretty good job here. They did a pretty good job. She is packing up top. And although you cannot really see it from the back because of all of her hair and her arms and whatnot, she is, uh, she's looking pretty thick from the back too. So you kind of see a little side angle and you can see something there. So they definitely did a pretty good job with the overall body sculpt. But what's really impressive with this figure is definitely gonna be the hair sculpt. I mean, it is absolutely crazy. Lots of detail here, really nothing to complain about. It's just a very clean and detailed hair sculpt. And what's really nice is that you can actually see her hair sculpt from the front, all a little bit of, well, not as much detail, but you can see a good amount of detail from the front just because of how her arms are kind of raised up and how, you know, her clothes aren't really getting in the way. So you can definitely kind of appreciate the hair from the front, which you usually can't do with all figures. And then finally, a couple of other little things. Of course, we do have the flower bouquet. It looks pretty good. Nice amount of detail in the sculpt itself. You have the matching flower in her hair as well. And then you do have this big ass base, which looks okay. I mean, it's a black and gold base. It it, it's fine. It's not too big either. I wouldn't say that, at least for the figure herself, but it is going to be pretty big if you plan on putting this like in your detolf. Definitely takes up a decent amount of space, but you can still fit some other figures in a detolf with it if you want. So for the price I paid, I think I am pretty happy with it and I really have no complaints. I know we do have some more high school DAC figures coming, like some quarter scale bunnies at both Rias and Aquino, which are probably going to break the bank, but I will probably end up buying those as well. Now the next figure and moving a little bit further down the DGen scale, we have Miko here from Prison School. 
the vice president of the Underground Student Council. And this is a union creator figure that came out in 2016. It's not a scale figure, but I would say it's one seven scale in terms of actual size. And yeah, I was just on my anime list looking at all of the previous anime that I've watched looking for figures to essentially buy because right now at the time of this video Bai was having some coupons on Makari and Yahoo Japan auction for like 15 or 20 percent off so I was looking for ways to responsibly spend my money and I came across prison school on my list of anime which I absolutely love I'm ashamed I even forgot about it to be honest but I rushed over to my favorite collections to see what figures they have and yeah I saw that they had this Miko figure and I had to absolutely get it. And she does have like some other scale figures I could have gotten, but I felt like this one was probably the best one where it wasn't like too safe to kind of take away from like the etchiness of the, you know, source material, the anime and the manga. But it wasn't also like too degen for my personal taste. So it was kind of right there in the middle. Now this figure is based off of some original artwork by the mangaka himself. There's no like specific scene in the anime or manga that this is pulled from, but it's kind of like similar scene to like something that happened in the first episode of the anime, but it's absolutely terrific. It absolutely screams prison school. If you know, you know. And when my wife saw this figure, I felt like she gave me a look and gave me a little bit of judgment. I felt a little bit of judgment in her eyes, but that's okay. She hasn't seen prison school, so she doesn't understand its greatness. But yeah, overall, I think this figure is absolutely terrific. I think you Credit did a really good job with this. The overall scope is pretty well done. Just how the shirt and her skirt is torn, the details all throughout her jacket look really great as well. And I love the paint job. The paint job has that matte finish throughout her actual clothes. Lots of good shading, just looks very, very, natural and then you have the boots with the glossiness that kind of offsets the matte finish but also pulls it all together so just really really well done in terms of like the technical aspects of it and i i absolutely love it i mean the pose yes please just step on me please but <laughs> that's all i'm gonna say about the pose but yeah she looks great the only kind of negative i have about it is definitely gonna be like her mouth I'm looking at the original artwork that this is made from, and you can see in the original artwork, her mouth is definitely more relaxed, where here it looks like she's kind of biting down and not really relaxed. And I think they could have done just a little bit better job with like kind of making her lips just a little bit more distinguishable than what we have here. Just make them a little bit more pinker, kind of make them stand out just a little bit more. I think that would have helped as well. But overall, to be honest, the whole mouth thing for me is kind of a small complaint. I would buy this figure again without any doubt. I absolutely love it. And now I feel like I have to buy more prison school figures. So you will probably be seeing more of those in the very coming future because I actually already bought one. It's on the way from Japan right now. It's on a boat, but we'll get to it eventually. But yeah. Great figure, and now I'm probably gonna go rewatch the anime. Now moving on to our next figure here, I have SkyTube's Usada Yu, who was illustrated by Saitome. This is a 1-6 scale that came out in 2019. Now, I'm not typically one to buy a lot of original character figures, although I do have two in this video, but that's just by you know, coincidence. I don't buy a lot, trust me. But when I saw Miss Usada Yu here uh, for the first time, either on Amyami or just kind of randomly on my figure collection, I absolutely fell in love with her. So I threw her on my wish list and just kind of been keeping her in my back pocket as to when I wanted to pull the trigger and buy her. And I finally got her for $150 from someone on my figure collection, which I think is a fair price. You know, I don't really see her going for much more than that, nor do I feel she goes for much cheaper than that. So I feel comfortable paying the $150 for her. But yeah, overall, I absolutely love her design. And I'm not like talking about like her outfit, but just her specifically, her character design. So how her face looks, her eye color, her hairstyle, the hair color. I'm a sucker for girls with silver hair. But yeah, she just looks really, really good. And then looking at the actual outfit that she's wearing, it's cute. I mean, it's a bunny outfit with a bikini. The stockings are very, very well done. And the jacket is just kind of a vibe. So uh, yeah, she is a great figure pose is really nicely done as well and really no complaints when it comes to this figure okay i take that back i have a very very small complaint so again this is a cast off figure and unfortunately i cannot attach the bikini top and bottom in the back so they're kind of just hanging there to be honest they can come off very easily if i wanted to pull them off right now but they don't they, they seem to stay on there pretty well even without being attached on the back so again a very very small problem that i have with the figure but uh, yeah 
absolutely love her. I wish we had some more figures of this character. We do have another variant of her uh, where she has some blonde hair and a pink outfit, which looks fine, but I definitely prefer the silver, but yeah. Great figure. Now moving on to our final figure. It's gonna be Vertex's Elf Villager number five, Kukuru. She is a 1-6 original character, and this is the limited edition version. So interesting little backstory regarding me and this figure here. So I've had a few of these Elf Villagers on my wish list for some time now with Kukuru being kind of at the top of that list. So I was just waiting for a good time to add one or two to my collection. But just a couple of months ago, Zuko did his pre-order roundup for the month of September in which he was talking about Elf Villager number 12, just going up for pre-order. And I had responded that they usually been in price in the aftermarket. And he had a follow-up question as to whether the limited edition ones also been. So I hopped on Amiyami, um, Amiyami just to see, you know, what the prices were looking like for pre-owned limited edition versions. And I happened to stumble upon this beauty right here. So interesting story about this specific figure is that she's actually had two releases, one in 2021 and one in 2023. And according to Amiyami, this is the 2021 version of her. Although I can find absolutely no differences between the two releases in my uh, research. So whatever, <laughs> it's kind of whatever. But I think because it's the older version of her, I was able to get her for much, much cheaper. And this B plus rated figure cost me roughly 11,000 yen, which I think it was like $85. So I saw that price. I was like, you know what? Why not? Let me just go ahead and start the collection now. So thank you, Zuko. This one is all because of you, my friend. But yeah, now that I have the figure in hand, absolutely no regrets whatsoever. I think she looks absolutely adorable. And I was actually looking on my figure collection at all the Elf Village girls, and it looks like she is probably the most owned um, Elf Villager there is between both her limited and standard version. So I guess I have pretty good taste and the rest of you guys do as well. But yeah, super adorable. I mean, I love the way that she looks, um, the short hair. I love how the hair is covering up one side of her face. And she does have two different face plates if you get the limited edition version. So with the standard version, you just get that, you know, kind of standard smirk on her face. But the limited edition version gives you kind of a troubled or distressed look, which I think is really, really cute and kind of worth the extra money. So that's probably the face plate I'm gonna stick with. And then, you know, kind of moving down to the rest of her figure, her body. Yeah, they did a pretty good job with that sculpt. I mean, she is definitely well endowed. In fact, I don't know how this little piece of cloth is even staying on her chest because if you look at her side boob, that thing is being held on by like a little piece of thread. It must be some magic thread because otherwise, no way is that gonna be able to support that piece of tight fabric over her. Now, in terms of the cast off ability with this figure, so you can pretty much remove everything for the most part. So you can definitely remove all of the blue parts that you see on her. So her cape, the sashes on her side, and then her skirt as well. And that would pretty much just leave you with a very revealing bodysuit that you can have with her. But then in addition to that, of course, you can always remove her chest piece here and replace it with the one that isn't covered with this little flimsy piece of cloth. And I will say this, Vertex did make it fairly simple to like assemble and disassemble this figure for whenever you want to change out any of the parts and when i first got this figure her bare chest was actually already attached that's how amiami sent it to me and i had started shooting some of the b-roll of the box with her bare chest exposed and you guys almost got it almost got it but i caught it at the last second now moving on to some other aspects of this figure, we of course have this big ass axe, which I find to be absolutely hilarious because she doesn't really seem like the elf to be swinging around such a weapon in my opinion. It just kind of looks like a contradiction, this weapon and you know her looks in general, which I find to be absolutely hilarious, but I love it, I absolutely love it. And then we have this little cute little bird in her hand. Not sure if it has a name or anything, but it is what it is, it's cute. And then we have the base. And here we have the limited edition uh, grass base. And it was kind of a pain to ask, like getting her in her pegs because the grass kind of makes it a little bit difficult to kind of line up the holes, but finally got her in. But you know, it's okay, it's an okay base. I'm not like thrilled about it, but I don't think the standard base that comes with the other figure or the standard version is that great either. It's kind of just like a white base, but it also comes with this um, gold trim here that you kind of just put her in. And her base is already big, but that makes her base even 
bigger. In fact, I was comparing this gold part of her base to uh, Rhea's back there, and it's roughly the same size. So definitely pretty big. And I don't think it looks good enough for me to really kind of you know, waste the space on. So I don't think I'm going to actually use this. Um, I'm not sure if the white base is included in my version as well. I don't remember seeing it, but I kind of wish I had that base to be honest, because it does look better than just the grass base. I think the grass base with the gold trim looks pretty good. It just takes up too much space. But yeah, because of the size of the base, I'm a little hesitant to add any more of these Elf Village girls in my actual collection because I take up so much damn space. So I make it like one or two more at the very most, including maybe like a dark Elf Village girl, but We'll definitely see, but overall, I still really do enjoy this figure quite a bit. All right, so that wraps it up for this video. Let me know down in the comments what you guys think about these four figures here. Be sure to hit that like button, easy way to support the channel, and I would greatly appreciate it. Be sure to subscribe for more videos, and I will catch you guys in the next one. Peace.